It's your local government at work. Live from City Hall in downtown Warren, this is the Warren City Council meeting on SelineRiverChronicle.com. United States. Father God, we ask a special blessing upon the President of the United States, upon Congress, and upon our state legislators and our leaders here within the uh, city of Warren and the county of Bradley. We ask that you would come into this city council meeting, that you will lead us, that you will guide us, and that we will make decisions for all of the citizens for whom we represent. We ask that you will give us traveling grace as we return back to our dwelling places. We ask a special blessing upon, upon all the city employees and other elected officials, aldermen, mayor, city clerk, our treasurer, and our city attorney that represent this city. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's sure everyone remain standing on the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be seated. Madam Clark, call the roll, please. <laughs> Here. Here. I note that we have a forum present. Item four is called approval of the minutes that you've been mailed in your packet. I move that the minutes of February 11th be approved as mail. Second. A motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion, corrections, additions? Hear none. All in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, and none against. Madam Clerk, you are recognized to present the financial statement. Okay. The balance in the general fund on February the 28th was $317,897.48. Yearly balance revenue, $384,000. Yearly gross revenue, $1,000,000. Gross revenue, $1,000,000. Gross revenue, 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 Law enforcement, $144,758.14. Fire, $33,378.42. Sanitation, $73,882.79. Building codes, $6,754.09. District court, $18,898.05. Municipal building, $5,376.66. Recreation, $12,612.41. Cultural Center, $9,177.58. Armory Neighborhood Center, $1,391.82. Other expenses, $19,449.32. Year to date expenditures, $367,437.01. And that's an increase of $15,503.45. The balance in the street, street fund on February 28th was $201,301.49. Year to date revenue, $48,928.45. Year to date expenditures, $55,105.11. And that's a year to date decrease of $6,176.66. The balance in the other accounts was one million nine hundred twenty-nine thousand one hundred twenty dollars and fourteen cents. Year to date revenue six hundred six thousand four hundred seven dollars and fifty cents. Transfers out six hundred six thousand nine hundred forty-eight dollars and sixty-seven cents, and that's a decrease for a year of five hundred and forty-one dollars and seventeen cents. You should also have a treasurer's report in front of you. Motions in order to approve the financial statement. We move that we approve the financial statement. Second. Motion and a second to approve the financial statement. Motion by Henderson, second by Ford. Okay. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor of approving the financial statement, raise your hand. I see five, four, and none again. Madam Clerk, you recognize. Okay, uh, in our city sales and use tax, we received 
$695.09 in February. The year to date total is $120,845.87. And that's down about $1,000 from the same time period last year. We received in the county sales and use tax $41,603.97. Year to date total of $82,436.06. And we're down almost $1,000 in there also. We should have a copy of the uh, district court clerk's report for January. <clears throat> Any questions or discussion? All of them are recognized. No one's, uh, we have one person that signed in to speak. Hugh, if you'd come up. And this is Hugh Connor that owns uh, <clears throat> more stuff. Thank you. It left me. This is, ladies and gentlemen, this is Hugh Connor. Hugh. I'm going to talk to y'all about these open air vendors we got around town. Uh, what kind of vendors? Open air vendors. Okay. Uh, I just heard a lady here talk about sales tax and you know, income down about $1,000. Those people don't pay any sales tax. I do. Every business in town here, if they get you know, a building and everything, they got privilege license, we pay sales tax. We collect it. These people don't. You see them sitting up at the Fresno parking lot or the Valero. Uh, I stopped and talked to that boy at Valero. Uh, they don't even have a sales tax number with, with the state. So they don't pay sales tax, they don't collect it or anything else. Well, you know, times are hard. The cities are all looking for money coming in and everything. You know, the, the city's got bills too. We've got the police department, we've got the fire department, sanitation, streets, you know. That's, that's money that's walking out the door. Not only for me, but for the city itself. Uh, I mean, it's, it's every week. Somebody's sitting up somewhere around town here selling stuff. That's money out of my pocket as a businessman, plus it's out of the city's pocket as sales tax. Treasure license money, all that. You know, I like for the city to pass an uh, ordinance to where it's... it's against city ordinance, <clears throat> where they're not able to do that anymore. Uh, I'm not against anybody having a yard sale. I charge them a $5 permit fee. That's sales tax money that the city don't collect. Money out of my pocket, but I'm, that's just part of it. People's going to have yard sales. So let the people, you know, pay a $5 permit. If they have a, a yard sale this week, they'll pay $5. If they have one next weekend, pay another $5. All it does is, is make it for the sales tax money that the city's losing. <coughs> That's something, you know, I talked to the mayor about last year. And, uh, you know, it, it's time to do something. I mean, summertime's coming up, and there's going to be a ton of money walking out the door that y'all going to lose. I mean, I'm going to lose it too because I, it's my sales also, but the city's going to lose it also. <coughs> Appreciate y'all taking the time to let me talk to y'all about it. That's something y'all think about. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is under mayor's report, and it's the BCEDC report. You have that in your packet. And you have the income statement uh, from the sales tax account. And item B is now called, and that is an ordinance uh, to rezone uh, what we call the Potlatch Staff House. And it would be, they have appeared before the Planning Commission, and we have Robert Gray here tonight with Potlatch Corporation if you have any uh, questions. All parties have been notified of the hearing tonight or that the ordinance will be brought on the agenda. And it's ordinance number 875. And it's the same thing that we rezoned the uh, uh, old Potlatch uh, Woodlands office. Mm -hmm. And it, what it is is a rezone from heavy industrial to commercial. And it actually <coughs> protects the neighborhood because uh, right now they could put it in log yard on it if they so desire, but this makes it a more uh, saleable entity and they have a prospect to sell the uh, potlatch staff house too. 
and if the council has any questions for me, I'm gonna punt and make Robert answer. So, uh, the ordinance eight seven five. I move that we place ordinance number eight seven five on this uh, first reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to place ordinance eight seven five on its first reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, and all those in favor, place ordinance 875 on its first reading. Raise your hand. I see five, four, and none against. Ordinance 875 is on its first reading. An ordinance to amend ordinance number 220 and for other purposes, whereby, excuse me, whereas by ordinance number 220, the city of Warren, Arkansas adopted as zoning regulations. For the city of Warren, Arkansas, the zoning regulations prepared for Warren Planning Commission by City Planning Division, University of Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas, dated May 1964 and adopted by the Warren Commission Planning Commission on the 11th day of May 1964. And whereas Warren Planning Commission is certified by the City Council of Warren, Arkansas, the said ordinance should be amended to classify the property in the city of Warren, Arkansas, here and after described from M2 to C1 in order to sell said real estate. <coughs> now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Warren, Arkansas, Section 1, that Ordinance Number 220 of the City of Warren, Arkansas, including but not limited to all maps and descriptions of zoning districts B, and the same hereby is, amended to classify all that property in the City of Warren, Arkansas, described in Attachment A to this ordinance, and incorporated herein is set forth word for word in this ordinance from M2 to C1 in order to sell said real property. The ordinance shall be in full force and effect from an accurate passage and publication. Attachment A to Ordinance 875 to be rezoned from M2 to C1. A tract of land lying in the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of Section 6, Township 13 South Range 9 West, be more particularly described as commencing at the northwest corner of Block 3 or Block 2 of the southern edition of the City of Warren, Arkansas, running thence south 29.95 feet to the south right of way of Pine Street for a point of beginning, thence north 82 degrees 57 minutes and one second east along the said south right of way 16.42 feet then south 168.37 feet to the south line of said lot three, then west 16.3 feet to the west line of lot three, then north along the west line of said lot three, a distance of 166.36 feet to the point of beginning containing 0.06 acres, more or less, and a tract of land lying in the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of section six, township 13 south, Range 9 West, being more particularly described as commencing at the northwest corner of Lot 3 of Block 2 of the southern addition to the City of Warren, Arkansas, running thence south 29.95 feet to the south right away of Pine Street, thence north 82 degrees 57 minutes and one second east along the said right away, south right away, a distance of 16.42 feet to the point of beginning. Thence continuing north 82 degrees 57 minutes 1 second east along the said south right of way. I lost my place. 21.49 feet. Thence north 87 degrees 38 minutes and 8 seconds east along the said south right of way. 72.45 feet. Thence north 89 degrees 29 minutes 45 seconds east along the said south right of way. 76.46 feet. Then south 87 degrees 38 minutes 30 seconds east along the said south right away 88.31 feet to the east line of lot two of block two of said southern addition. Then south zero, de zero degrees six minutes 39 seconds west 195.63 feet to the southeast corner of said lot two. Then south 89 minutes <coughs> excuse me, 89 degrees, 2 minutes, 23 seconds, west 124.85 feet to the southwest corner of said lot 2. Thence north along the east line of said lot 3, a distance of 13 feet. Thence north 89 degrees, 31 minutes, 9 seconds, west 117.5 feet 
then north 12.7 feet, then west 15.7 feet, then north 168.37 feet to the point of beginning, containing 1.13 acres, more or less. That would be ordinance 875. I know that we suspend the rules and place ordinance number 875 on the second reading. Second. A motion and a second to suspend the rules and place the ordinance 875 on a second reading. All those in, excuse me, any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, none against. Ordinance 875 is on its second reading. An ordinance to amend ordinance number 220 for other purposes. I move that we suspend the rules and place ordinance number 875 on its third and final reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place ordinance 875 on its third and final reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, and none against. Ordinance 875, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 220 and for other purposes. I move that we adopt ordinance number 875. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 875. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, and one against. There's no emergency close, so the <coughs> ordinance is adopted. All right, Robert, thank you. <coughs> the next item of business will be ordinance 876. <coughs> concerns abandoning an alley on the Presbyterian Church property. <clears throat> I now declare a public hearing for the purposes of discussion of anyone interested in making a statement on the uh, abandonment of an alley on First Presbyterian Church property from Jolly Street to the Newton property located the south side of Presbyterian Church, all land of which uh, the alley is uh, resting on First Presbyterian Church of Warren property. Anyone here to discuss that issue? Hearing none, I declare the meeting closed and it's ordinance 876. And I need some I move that we place ordinance number 876 on this first reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to place ordinance 876 on this first reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, and none against. This one won't be as hard as that last <laughs> An ordinance to, excuse me, ordinance 876. An ordinance to abandon a portion of an alley located on lot three and north of block two on Turner's map of the city of Warren and for other purposes. Whereas a petition was duly filed with city clerk of the city of Warren, Arkansas, asking the city to vacate and abandon all that portion of the street as set out in said petition. And whereas after due notice as required below, the city council has at the time and place mentioned in the notice heard all persons desiring to be heard on the question and has ascertained that the alley or portion thereof herein described has heretofore been de dedicated to public use as an alley <coughs> herein described has not actually been used by the public generally for a period of at least five years subsequent to the filing of the plat containing said alley. That all owners of the property abutting upon the portion of the alley to be vacated have filed with the city council their written consent to the abandon abandonment or have had an opportunity to be heard at said public hearing, and that the public interest and welfare will not be adversely affected by the abandonment of the alley. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Warren, Arkansas, Section 1, <coughs> that the City of Warren, Arkansas releases, vacates, and abandons all its rights, together with the rights of the public generally, in and to the alley described as follows to wit. That portion of the alley between what is currently designated Jolly Street west to the Newton property found in the northwest quarter of Turner's map of the city of Warren, Arkansas, map 5-13-9, more particularly described as lot 3, north of block 2, lots 1 through 6. That a copy of the ordinance duly certified the city clerk shall be filed in the office of the recorder of the county and recorded in the deed records of Bradley County. This ordinance shall be full force and, full force and effect from an from and after its passage and publication. I move that we suspend the rules and place ordinance number 876 on the second reading. Second. 
There's a motion and a second to place ordinance 876 on the second reading. Any discussion? Hear none. All those in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, none against. Ordinance 876. An ordinance to abandon a portion of an alley located on lot three and north of block two on Turner's map of the city of Warren for other purposes. I move that we suspend the rules and place ordinance number 876 on this third and final reading. Second. Motion and second to place ordinance 876 on this third and final reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your hand. Five, four, none against. Ordinance 876, an ordinance to abandon a portion of the alley located on lot three and north of block two of Turner's map of the city of Warren and for other persons. I move that we adopt ordinance number 876. Second. Motion is second to adopt ordinance 876. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your hand. I see five, four, and one. Yes. All right. Uh, is, everyone's aware that's to help the hospital out. We all know what's going on there. Uh, in your, next in your packet is a resolution to utilize state aid monies. Uh, part of the state aid uh, program uh, the state aid committee met and looked at, I don't know, 25 projects. They approved 11 of them. You see 11. Uh, the Warren project is called Job C06001 Warren West Pine Street Overlay. It's an overlay of West Pine Street from Etheridge Street at the railroad track to the county park at the Warren city limits. And that will be resolution 573. And I will read it at this time. Resolution 573. A resolution expressing the willingness of the city of Warren, Arkansas to utilize state aid street monies for the following city projects. <coughs> Job C06001, Warren West Pine Street Overlay, selected sections S. Whereas the city of Warren understands that state aid street program funds are available for certain city projects, the following participating ratios. Reconstruction and resurfacing, preliminary engineering, preliminary engineering the state aid is 100%. Construction of city projects right away, state aid is zero, city pays 100%. Utilities, state aid zero, city pays 100%. Construction, state aid pays 100%. Construction engineering, State aid pays 100%. City projects programmed within this, the city would pay 100%. A city program, city projects program, but not let to come <coughs> Now, therefore, be resolved by the City Council of the City of Warren, Arkansas, that Section 1, the city will participate in accordance with its designated responsibilities in this project. The mayor is authorized and directed to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts necessary to expedite the construction of this city project. The city agrees upon <coughs> completion of this project to assume the maintenance of the right-of-way by city forces and or others, <coughs> including utilities and individuals in accordance with the prevailing Arkansas State Highway and Transportation Department regulations. The city pledges its full support and hereby authorizes Arkansas State Highway and Transportation Department to initiate action to implement this project. If you'll notice in the newspaper article, I didn't catch it until I read it the second time, that uh, they, I thought it wouldn't go out to bid to July, but they're saying they're going to go out to bid in April. <coughs> I move that we approve resolution number 573. Second. We have a motion and a second. To approve resolution 573. Any discussion? I would just like for our news media that's here to uh, print the resolution as is because there is some confusion with some of our citizens thinking that this was extra money that could be done for any street and this is actually designated. Okay. Because He's the state yet. is actually responsible for that. Exactly. The city, uh, the state is, uh, does all the con construction work. In this case, the city won't be out of any money. This is all a state aid project. But when it was read in the newspaper, it wasn't really clear to some of the constituents and they would like for their streets to be. Oh, we have crime <laughs> needs all over Warren, but this is a one, this money was appropriated by the state aid committee. Uh, to several cities for particular streets in those towns. 
And that's why I ask that we ensure that our news media yeah. that's here yeah. get a clear, clean copy of what it's actually stating. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of accepting the 190000 from the state of Arkansas, raise your hand. Five, four, none again. Commission reappointments, uh, as you're aware, how the Housing Authority uh, nominates uh, they from within. Themselves. They reappoint Irma Brunson for a five-year term. I move that she be reappointed uh, per uh, question at the agenda meeting. She is in regular attendance. And I second the motion. Motion and second to appoint Irma Brunson to five-year term on the Housing Commission. All those in favor, raise your hand. Five, four, nine, nine. I'd like to recommend Bill Watson. Uh, he's been on the Parks and Rec for quite some time, and he is one of my regular attenders for that meeting and really enjoys the work. I move the reappointment of Bill Watson. Second. And he's agreed to serve. Motion is second to appoint Bill Watson to a five-year term on Parks and Rec. All those in favor, raise your hand. Five, four, nine, nine. And who is our chair of uh, Parks and Rec? He is incapacitated at this time. Is he still the chair? Yes. And that's something that your mayor has got to tend to. So I would say we were chairless. Under police chief uh, monthly report, and I'll try to get something resolved on that, Alderman Henderson, before the next meeting, so we can get that put aside. Oh, excuse me, Alderman. Uh, let's see. Police Chief Randy Peek. Give his monthly report. Any questions? Or Chief, you want to talk about what's going on? In the uh, as you can see on my report, that we have uh, we had a civil service meeting on February the twentieth, and two candidates were approved for hire. Uh, Mr. Kevin Black and Mr. Michael Key. Michael Key is already working as a dispatcher at the time he was approved for hire as a police officer and he will be moved into that spot uh, in the near future. Mr. Black went to work on March the 4th as a patrolman and we have one other slot and we should be finishing up that background within the next we're like a psychological evaluation on this individual and then I'm I'm pretty sure if the civil service uh, approves this person, we will have all three of those slots filled finally. So, congratulations. We're still, still going and uh, trying to uh, keep everything uh, going in the direction it needs to be. Any questions? Police. Uh, uh, committee? Yes. Oh, excuse uh, me. Also, uh, Seth Jolly was promoted from the dispatcher to the animal control officer. Yes, ma'am. And uh, the police committee has not met, but as you <coughs> see included in, in the chief's uh, written report, uh, Seth Jolly has been already promoted and has already gone to work in that capacity. As chairman of the police committee, I move that the step increase in pay which goes with this promotion be effective as of February the 18th, 2013, the day he took on his new duties. We have a motion. Second. And a second. And that pay is going from 931 to 956. There's 4B to 2F. You have a motion and a second to give Seth, to, to, since he's been promoted, Giving that pay increase. Any discussion? Hear none. All in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, nine again. Anything else? All in favor? Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. I'm Don't worry about it. If she was finished, it, was, it goes right into that. Okay, well, uh, I had several complaints from uh, some of the wheelchair or uh, whatever you call them owners from uh, Twin Rivers uh, being attacked by dogs on, on the corner of uh, Jolly and Rock Street. Up and down Rock at that beginning right there at that clean lot, Tony Cathy, cleans off regular, mm -hmm. all the way back down toward maybe Glover Street. It's about 10 or 15 right in that area, and they're multiplying as we speak because they, some of them are in heat. And they've been attacking kids and 
any kind of little old motorized vehicle that come up and down the street. And this is this is on Rock Street. Rock and yeah, right there on <coughs> the corner of Rock. And, yeah, you can go by there and see them. They'll be laying out there about eight or ten of them. What we picked up, and this is a problem with contending with all the town mm -hmm. folks, but uh, he has picked up a number of dogs. Uh, in fact, Pam, I think, running over out there. <coughs> uh, but nevertheless, I will get that information to him, and we'll put some uh, extra uh, attention on that area. Yeah, some of them will turn these puppies and get them now. They won't be able to. That's all I have. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Chief. Uh, how are you? Y'all have this monthly report. I do have one item here, and this is uh, concerning the uh, International Association of Arson Investigators. Uh, we normally send uh, Howard and Don Hollingsworth and Chuck, uh, Chuck Weir, and uh, I'm make a motion that we uh, that we send them to this. I believe it's semi-annual training that they do this. That we send those three individuals to the training. Make the motion. Can we have a second? Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Let's see five, four, and again. Anything else? All in the red. That's all I have. I just like to report to the council we're losing one of our firefighters, one of our paid, paid firefighters. He's uh, heading out to Monticello, so mm -hmm. we are going to be shopping for a new guy. <laughs> That's about it. Thank you. Mm. Anything else on the read? No, that's all I have. Right. Come back. Sanitation manager Mike May. Y'all have the monthly report. All the most is recognized. Yes, Mayor, uh, the uh, Sanitation Committee met uh, back on February 26th in the afternoon. <coughs> the uh, main topic of the main thing on the agenda was an increase in our uh, garbage uh, pickup rates. Okay. There's five items that the committee reviewed concerning this rate increase. Uh, one reason you have a sheet that shows the deficit in the sanitation department for 12 was $23,317. Now, I want to give you one reason that was there. Between uh, end of 11 and end of 12, we lost 239 <coughs> water meters uh, from people just moving out or whatever the reason. Well, that revenue would come up to uh, roughly $34,000 a year that we lost in revenue. Now, uh, another item, uh, uh, we have this contract for the people that uh, transport our garbage away from here. That includes a dollar a ton a year. So that's going to increase our cost $3,000 uh, this year. We have, uh, we're going to have to put a, uh, uh, well, it's a, the, at the transfer station, it's called water runoff removal. And when Mike, uh, that's my understanding, we have to put a, like a roof over a compaction area so that doesn't rain into the compaction area and have runoff water from that. <coughs> that's going to cost approximately 12000 Now, 
there's another item that I want Mike to explain on here, the Solid Waste District Annual Assessment of $3,750. Mike, if you would explain to the council what that... Well, Bradley County City warned uh, are both members of the Solid Waste District and they have assessed a dollar fee per ton on everybody in South Arkansas, basically. So. Uh, that's going to be a fee that's uh, mandated that we, there's, you know, there's nothing that we can do about it. It's, uh, it's going to happen this year, next year. Um, so, Is it a recurring it's every a, year? Yes, ma'am. Recurring fee. And that's uh, $3,750. That's new, that's new for 13 new expense that we didn't have in 12 and in the past. And the other uh, reason for the increase sometime over in the year we're going to need to buy a new truck and I understand it's the one that does the dumpsters. It's going to be Pat's truck, it's our commercial truck. Commercial truck. Okay. truck okay. runs six days a week uh, and uh, it's got quite a few miles on it. It's getting, uh, getting uncomfortable to drive with the amount of slack and different things in it. So We don't have a dollar amount here but that is an expense that's just about going to happen this year. Uh, so the bottom line is, uh, with these uh, new fees, uh, the increase in our getting our stuff hauled away, this runoff removal workout at the uh, compaction station, losing the water meters, and at some point a truck. <coughs> the committee met back on February 26th, and I already said that. And after discussing these issues on a motion by Alderman Burks, seconded by Alderman Henderson, the committee voted unanimously to recommend a rate increase to the, to the council for their approval. Now, in Alderman Burks' motion, his motion was to make this increase in three steps. A dollar in April, it would be now, a dollar in October, and a dollar in January. So that the impact of this you know, buying that three dollar increase is not quite as bad, even though it's not good. So, with that said, I would make a motion that we, the council, approve our garbage rate uh, increase. It's a committee motion and requires no second, so the floor is open for discussion. Okay, a dollar now, a dollar when? when? Uh, well, it we picked out a dollar in April. It said then March, but we too far along. Mm -hmm. but April, October, and January was the motion. <clears throat> so it makes the three dollar increase total effective in January of 14. Any discussion? Hearing none, y'all have heard the motion. You ready to vote? All those in favor of the committee's recommendation, raise your hand. I see four, four. Those against, one against. All right, motion carries. Anything else, Mr. Mosley? Well, that's all I have. <laughs> no, we got building codes. <laughs> you have the month to report any questions for Mike on the building codes? Mayor, can we just point out the fact that the city fee is still under the total cost for the uh, for the county, and that we're continuing with full services? Uh, no services would be uh, cut as it relates to uh, the services in place. We still pick up twice a week. And we're still, <clears throat> we're, we there's no fees charged for picking up furniture and all that stuff anymore. And we pick up limbs at no charge, except from commercial vendors, obviously. And like so none of that's changed. Sure they pick that yeah. up as well. I'd like the news media to write hard to them on that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anything else from All right, thank you, sir. Good job, uh, Mr. Chippers. <laughs> Let's see, street foreman Tommy Adams. 
I have real ideas about this. I'll talk to you. You'll about. share with yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I share with all. Y'all see Tommy Adams in front of you? He is the street corner. Yeah, Tommy. Hey, we've packed several streets this week and done a lot of ditch cleaning and we had a problem at the old land bill. We spent about close to a week out there trying to drain several thousands of gallons of uh, water that it collected back down in there. We're about to kill a bunch of them or plus it was on part of an old land field. And we had to go out and fix that problem, but we got it, got it all under control. Any questions? I do see one. All the Henderson's recognized. Uh, yes. Um I had contact with Mr. Clyde Temple uh, after reading the article in the newspaper. He was wanting uh, seven hills added to the street committee list, mm -hmm. and I did let him know that I would share that information at this meeting. Okay. And Helen, would you please let the chairperson, Mr. Burks, know this as well? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alderman Monk? I'd just like to ask Tommy if we. When y'all are over on East Pine, and I don't know if this needs to be done at the same time, but where they had to dig into the street there at Mr. Rose Screen's house, if you have this equipment have to be on it, that ditch from about Mr. Green's driveway around the corner from Bradley in front of the uh, house that's, that's on the corner, and then there's, there's a, a little cupboard there and the water also comes from the other, toward Dion's lot, and goes under the street. <clears throat> what I'm saying is, that's, that little stretch of ditch there is, is uh, it's we, not flooding the street, but it's We it's took not, that old big concrete block out of the ditch and cleaned a little there last week. Oh, did you? Yeah. But we, we, oh, I remember the concrete block, that's part of the sidewalk that the truck was yeah, could have a block and a lot of the water right there. Yeah, I could. I'm sure it out and all. I just noticed it's grown <coughs> up and it, you know, it, it flowed around there good. When it's clean, it flows around there good and gets on the way. That water out of, I think it breaks and comes back uh, toward uh, Myrtle Street, right, right up there somewhere. All it's on up yeah. about, it's on what it's called Crest and it goes down to, yeah. to Myrtle, but it's that other little. I know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, oh, yeah. On that route right there, going out to West Pine, it's been overlaid several times before. If we overlay it again, is there going to be certain spots? Several times before. I'm talking about no. when we overlay back this side I'm talking about on well, Pine. Well, we're not, uh, uh, this will be just the second overlay from uh, after the gap. Yeah, but what I'm talking about is you, so you understand, I just get off the path. You remember on the east side of the hospital, where we overlaid and we got so high on the overlay that the water went going up over the curb and into the neighbor's yard down there? Yeah, you have a lot of that around no, Turner Street cut away. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Are we going to get into a spot like that on Pine No, no, not on Pine Street. Okay. Uh, this is just your, uh, your second overlay. And... If you've ever went out West Pine after a big rain, right there just past the entrance to, to the southern court, it's dangerous. That the, the road is still fairly good right there as far as not being bumpy and broke up mm -hmm. on. But ever since they overlaid that or built that road, they left some ruts in there. And that water will get about six inches deep after the rain, and it'll take a steering wheel away from you when it hits it. Well, what we're going to do is whenever we do that overlay, we'll put a two-inch overlay in there, and that'll be all that up and put that water going back to your trough inlet so here and get that water off of the street the way it's supposed to be. And then on out out there, it's uh, just uh, one of those deals where in the, in the future we're going to have to do something. And so now is the best time in the world while somebody else is going to pay for it. And so I... I, I I think, I think the left flank works great. Two inches is all they're putting on there. This will be just a second overlay. It's, it's not going to be nothing like, plus we haven't got curved gutters on out there. Okay. 
So it's not going to affect you on that. Okay. And, you know, sometimes I know I know some of overlays. You know, Texas State, for instance, when they get rooted like that, they'll take that little grinder and grind it all the way back down. You're talking and then, high dollar. <laughs> I'm agreeing. I'm dollar. just talking about the problems yeah, that can yeah. cause with those log trucks going through there and running it back up again. Well, no, I don't think you're going to have that on that. Okay. Uh, I don't believe you have a better problem right in there. But I know what you're talking about, too, on your bill. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. The chairman is not here to report on the public street hearing. And would either member care to report on that or we can save that for next week, next month? All right. We will save that report for the next time. Community and Economic Development. Next is this time. Ways and means? No business. No business. Planning Commission, you have the minutes in your packet. The Aviation Committee met, you have those minutes. Water and Sewer, you have those minutes. <coughs> Parks and Rec, we have, uh, we took bids on. Uh, oh, I have, I have a question about the Airport Commission. Ah, okay. What about the design and construction of the runway extension? Is that just that the committee decided to put that on hold? Uh, they put that on hold because they feel like they need to expand uh, property on the, they call it airport sometimes, and you've flown into it, but it's a dark hole at night. Absolutely. And they're expanding, they're going to go west with property purchase and try to expand the perimeter mm -hmm. and also go north. So they're going to spend the money on the property, property first, first then. Okay. and then do runway extension later. <coughs> Okay, let's move on. Uh, housing, let's see where was that? Uh, parking rec. Let me see if I can find that. You have the bids in your uh, packet, and uh, Colin Hammett had a bid bond, Master Technical had a bid bond, Thunderbird Electric had no bid bond. You see the bids. Uh, Colin Hammond Electric was 27,751. Master Technician and Mechanics were across at 26,381. Thunderbird Electric, 25,800. I move that we take the bid that met the specifications of our specs that were advertised. The low bid low, that low, met the specs. Lowest bid that met the specs advertisement. That would be Master. Technician and Mechanicals, 26,381. And I will second that motion. And they motion did and have a bid bond, that is correct. That is correct. Okay. Discussion? Uh, oh, go ahead. Where are these lights? I mean, didn't we put some along one of the walls, but these are on the These are replacing the these. bollards. You know what I'm talking about, the short lights. Oh, okay. The ones that the kids... Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's about yeah, five of them missing, so, and the rest are, you can't find uh, replacement parts or bulbs, and they've outlived their usefulness. Well, these are, these are, this is not more lights along more sidewalls. These are just replacing where these they are. They are on the sidewalk. I know, but they are, they're replacing the little ones. Yes, the kids, yes, yes. Uh, or somebody decided to destroy them. Take apart. And these, these can't be destroyed <laughs> if you've looked at, they'll match what's on the new edition. Right. That's on a pole type. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sixteen foot pole. I can't remember all the specs. Now that's I didn't know if it was additional lights on part of the sidewalk. It had never been lights, but I understand it's replacement of the others. And, and those were not very good. I mean, no. even when they were first put down, the lights went out, and they were not very. Yeah. I don't know what kind of material they were built out of, but they were just not. Not very good. Oh, no problem, and we didn't have a warranty on them, right? No. <coughs> well, it's been too long. All of them closed. Who uh, did that previous work for us on those lights? Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Who's going to be doing the maintenance on the lights when we need maintenance on them? Thunderbird. Well, would, it, would there be any, any kind of intrinsic value having the person that did the previous work and is going to be continued doing the work do this work right here? As my husband, who built a lot of jobs for the highway department, said, if you don't meet the specifications, your bid is not considered. 
In fact, it should not have been accepted if it did not meet the specs. I just asked the question. You know, with that electrical stuff, is when somebody puts something in, you had to do a lot of tracing, going back and forward, and then you somebody used a different method than somebody else. So I just asked. Well, uh, to, uh, how can how can you submit a, uh, your bid if you don't meet the specifications on the bid? Well, that's not. I mean, why put out the specs if you're asking for something in particular and then? someone submit a bid and not meet the specs of the bid. What I want to mention is not to do with the bid, and I understand what y'all are saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but to answer one question about who's going to do the maintenance, if it's approved to accept this master technician of uh, technician mechanics bid, do they have some kind of uh, warranty with these lights that they would uh, do for some point in time the maintenance on them? I or believe the warranty required I believe it required a one year uh, bid pull them and see. Bid spec. But that that'd probably just be parts only. It won't be late. Well that's what I say, was it a warning? Did it include parts yeah, labor for how long? And, and, and you know, for how long? And, that would take care of the first year, but then I understand what Joel was saying about some of the mine. Paul, can We have a motion and a second, and the vote's been called. Have you got the second? Okay. Second was Ms. Fuller. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the motion to accept uh, Master. Technician mechanical bid twenty six thousand three eighty one. Raise your hand. Who met the specifications on the bid? Four. That Those against. One again. Motion carried. We have a ball game tonight. Housing authority, you got the minutes of the meeting. Social center, you have that report. Any unfinished business? Oh, good. Yes, I do, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I got roped into a meeting, I apologize, for the hospital health care day. I mean, health expo, whatever you want to call it. And they had an increasing number of patrons that came last year that was kind of concerned about the kids getting away since they had so many activities out in the street. And for safety reasons, they want to block off Bragg, I think it is, from the railroad track right there on the north side. So they can control the traffic coming from the south side off of 278 business. Uh, when is that? That will be March, April the 6th. It's on Saturday. And wouldn't affect anything this side of the railroad track but the health complex. They yeah, I was thinking they closed that last year. No, they didn't. They, no, it was, it was open last year. So the motion is to close Bragg Street on April 6th for the hospital, uh, what's it called? Health Expo. Uh, hospital to. Health Expo event. Not a health. Do we Not have a second? Close it, Joel. Second. Right there at the railroad track. Motion. Mm -hmm. you can't I'm sorry, my bad. I'll second. Second, though. Now we can discuss it. Too many questions going in here. Now we can discuss it. There, there are kids out there that, you know, play on the various types of equipment that come in, so uh, I agree that may be a, a safety mechanism for them. And you do cross the street mm -hmm. to their facility and there was on the east side. over on the other yeah, side. Yeah, food maybe. also, yeah. and the parking. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. I see five, four, and none again. And it ends early, yes, so, it does. Uh, so it wouldn't be all It day. shouldn't affect anybody. What are the uh, hours to I think it starts at 8, but they'll come out to start coming to 6. You have state police coming in, bringing their equipment, and then they got that little smoking house. And sometimes they have yeah, a helicopter. Mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be over by 12. Mm -hmm. Under new business item 12, uh, the Arkansas Economic Development Commission is having a training session with the City of Warren in conjunction with Donna Lawhorn and, and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, 
And it's because of the increased interest in Warren, uh, in our spec building and other property. We're, <clears throat> we're going under an extensive training effort to learn how to sell or train to sell the industrial sites and it's going to be a, called site visit training and it'll just better prepare the site of uh, the contact committee uh, the existing contact committee for uh, selling these properties when we have a prospect other than a telephone call that actually wants to see the property we're working with a guy named Kevin Sexton with uh, AEDC and I think it's a good program, and Mr. Tolfrey will be involved, and I'll be involved, and you'll make the next meeting. And Donna and David King and several others in the community, Mike is on the, uh, helping us with some of the zoning. Steve Rand on the city staff is helping with some of the water issues, uh, and I think it's a good thing for our city to be prepared. And I'd like to sit in for continuing education hours to keep my certification. Yay, come on. <laughs> I might like to cover some of it too. All right. Mr. Tolkien. Yeah, so well, I guess put the task on local media along with that training in some kind of way we can get the word out to the people that are always out in the community complaining about how bad the community is for a chance to try to talk about how good the community is because they don't know who they're saying it to. You know, a lot of times we run down our own self, and people won't even have an opportunity to come see us with just listening to other people. They think we're the worst hole in the United States. And sometimes I don't think the, the public realize the harm that they also do talking about the things that we have to offer. Exactly right. Well, I think you've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Thank you. Everyone should have uh, the 2013 job fair flyer. It's going to be Thursday, April the 25th from 10 until 2.30 at the Emanuel Baptist Church, and we ask that you help get the word out. Right now we have uh, 20 vendors that have signed up. Our goal is to have at least 30 um, as we did last year, and I believe we will meet or exceed our goal. So. Anything you can do to uh, give some PR. We will need people volunteering to help with the setup and the takedown and um, meals for the lunch, etc. So if you want to sign up, uh, you have my cell number, my contact information. Contact me. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Miss Fulton, we need a motion to pay the bill. I move to pay the bill. <laughs> 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 Mr. Mosley, section. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Puffy. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of paying the bill, raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Notice that it's unanimous. <laughs> Hallelujah. The meeting is set for the uh, Monday day. We need a motion to adjourn. All in favor of paying. You can go hire y'all the superintendent. Oh, yeah. Everybody is playing. We're going to get out, man.